Yes. Oh my God. Crunchy, cybernetic sounds. Oh my God. I love that. Oh my God. Hey, Stringies. You have been enthusiastically requesting me to check out the Ultra Kill soundtrack. Now, I know that this game is still in early access, a first person shooter from Steam. And normally, I would only agree to react to fully released games. But seeing that a lot of you are so enthusiastic, like super enthusiastic for me to check out this soundtrack, I'm giving it an exception. Without further ado, here we go. My first Ultra Kill soundtrack reaction. Let's go. Now, here's a song called Castle Vane. Very obviously referring to Castlevania. Now, is it gonna sound Castlevania-ish? Like dark, gothic, baroque music? I'm gonna find out very soon. Okay, just the first two seconds alone, frantic drums, baroque style harpsichord line, immediate Castlevania vibes, definitely. This is definitely emulating that Bloody Tears vibe in the beginning, but then suddenly breaks it, does its own thing, and let's see how it goes. Okay, first of all, I really appreciate the very repetitive drums, the very repetitive guitar pro and chord progression. In my experience, when composers or arrangers intentionally make something super repetitive, sometimes when you hear something over and over and over and over again, the same exact thing over and over again, it eventually becomes white noise. It eventually becomes part of the background atmosphere. And sometimes in music writing, that is like very effective if you want, for example, in this particular case, if you want the drums, if you want the beats and the guitars to eventually move back into the background of your subconscious mind when you're listening to also sometimes highlight another element of the song. In this particular case, I'm sensing that the very loose melodic structure that is being done by that distorted synth or the distorted lead guitar will eventually become the focus of your attention because everything else becomes like a repetitive blur, becomes a sort of white noise that it becomes same, samey, same-ish, that we, you will eventually focus on the thing that constantly changes, which in this case is that sort of subtle melody going on right here. Wow! Wow! I love that! I don't know. I can't explain it initially because this is always, you know, when I react to music, most of the time, 99% of the time, this is always like first impressions. And that's just how I process these reaction videos. But wow! That is definitely going for gothic, dark, medieval style, a la Castlevania, hence the title, Castlevania. But also going on the heavier side, which Castlevania doesn't usually go to. It usually sticks to that gothic horror vibe a la classical. This one clearly goes heavier. Yeah, I love this totally unpredictable chord progression as if the composer is intentionally defying your expectations. Oh, is this going to this next chord progression? No, no, it's going here. No, it's going here. Oh, it actually went here. I love that. It's defying expectations, going the road less traveled, and that makes music unpredictable and exciting.
definitely going for a more rhythmic, more atmospheric vibe. The intensity of it, but with very simple melody or no melody at all. Definitely going for a more atmospheric, more ambient vibe. It's more about the texture and more about the feeling rather than singability. Yeah, there's a very simple long note melody going on in the background. But they're changing the key, modulating to different keys every time, but still retaining that same style of melody. Again, this is more about the intensity rather than the melody, which is also very effective for this type of music. Wow, okay. First of all, I really appreciate the juxtaposition between the harpsichord and the intense electronic metal techno sound going on. You know, I always appreciate genre or instrumental contrasts like that, especially when it's intentionally done like this. But also, I, I can really appreciate the intense atmospheric rhythmic vibes going on with it um, without really knowing anything about the game aside that it's a shooter game this is definitely fitting the the vibe the imagery in my head but also the fact that they went for the dark gothic metal vibes it is just an icing in the cake that is super tastefully done and i really appreciate it yeah This is the Cyber Grind from Ultra Kill. Let's check it out. Damn, this is hyper intense. Oh my God. Yes, oh my god, that crispy dubstep style bass with all of those what what is what is that term again? Very crunchy cybernetic sounds. Oh my god, I love that. Oh my god. I'm going to be a little bit honest here and say that the EDM or the electronic music genre is something that I'm still trying to understand more. I really believe in the principle that there there is good and bad music in every single genre. And when it comes to the electronic music genre, I am feeling that this is one of the good ones. Wow, this is like ultra intense, but there's a huge crossover between the metalcore and electronic sound and techno vibes that I'm, I'm getting right here. And oh my God, I can't get enough of it. Oh, wow, wow, that is brilliant. What you're seeing happening right here is the music 
is currently featuring this super intense rhythm, super intense vibe. But as you can see with, with that arpeggio, that arpeggio, that harmonic arpeggio, it still found the time to portray something serene, something beautiful with this harmonic progression right here. It is some sort of respite, some sort of break between the intense, hardcore, rhythmic parts. Oh my God, it's beautiful. Oh my God. Wow. Oh my God. That is like... I, I, I'm imagining a scenario where the game developer, the game producer was like, can you make really intense music for our game? And then the composer was like, how intense do you like it to be? Pick a number from 1 to 10. And then the producer was like, how about 99? <laughs> and the composers were like, okay. <laughs> Yeah, oh my god. Buried under all this intensity, this rhythmic, powerful vibe right here, there is something intelligent, musically intelligent, harmonic progression going on. And you can hear it in those fast arpeggios. There is a chord progression intelligence that is happening that is almost like buried underneath the intensity. But if you listen closely, it's there and oh my god it's it's almost something like very skilled composers very skilled music producers would like be talking to fellow music producers like myself hey this is not just brute force you know there's some compositional thinking going on in here it's not just all about the power there's also power and beauty and this is like one great interpretation of it one great example of power and beauty in one work of art combined there it is again the beauty of chord progression disguised under this manic frenetic rhythmic pattern of everything oh my god it's so so unique very unique wow wow that is amazing that is amazing um oh my god in my opinion as a composer and music producer for the past 25 plus years, rhythm is the muscle of the music. Harmony and chord progression is the emotion, the part of the music that gives emotion. And melody can sometimes also be that, but melody can be so many other things. So, so, so the fact that there is this very thoughtful intention by the by the composer, by the producer, to combine beautiful harmony and intense rhythm. That is a beautiful thing. And I think I really appreciate that with, with this, with, with Ultra Kill. Amazing, really amazing. Wow. By the way, I'm always on the lookout for very cool video game music to react to. So if you have any suggestions, put them in the comments or use the content suggestion form in my video description.
I believe this is the first song I've been seeing being requested in the comment section from Ultra Kill. So this is order. No idea how this goes. Let's go. Oh my god, very nice synth cello arrangement. Yeah, that was a very melancholic arrangement, very melancholic melody and harmony with synth cello and synth choir. It's actually very beautiful, very touching. There's a hint of sadness. There's a hint of melancholy. There's also some semblance of hope, but also despair. So it's very, <laughs> it's definitely multiple emotions happening right there. Why did I just expect that? You know, I did know that Ultra Kill was going to have intense music, but somehow with that cello and choir melancholic intro, I kind of knew that it was just going to be a prelude to something intense, probably because it was touching on my own inner creativity that I would also arrange something like this, start with something melancholic, romantic even, and then immediately introduce something intense and heavy, just like what happened here. Yeah, this is definitely going classical, baroque, gothic, very gothic, dark horror chord progression. It wouldn't be out of place in a Castlevania game or at Dracula movie where they are doing like a montage of every evil thing that Dracula has been doing in the past decade or century or something like that, but they made it metal. Wow. <laughs> that was an unexpected chord progression or a modulation. That was an unexpected modulation, but very much welcome. I, I appreciate it. I enjoyed it. Okay, I'm having some thoughts in my mind. So far, from what I've heard with these Ultra Kill songs, it is very intelligent chord progressions, harking back to the dark, the darker sound of Baroque music. For example, like Toccata in Fugue in D minor, one of the most famous examples of the more darker sound of Baroque music, Toccata in Fugue in D minor by Johann Sebastian Bach. It is evoking that kind of characteristic, that kind of ambiance, but with just heavy metal instrumentation. And you know what? I'm all for it. I really love this vibe. Wow, that chord progression. This is pretty much... I'm like listening to an alternate reality. This is like multiverse of classical music, multiverse of Baroque music. This is almost like answering the question, what if Bach was a heavy metal techno composer instead? This is the answer. Again, oh wow, the same exact thing I said about chord progressions, about harmony being the emotional backbone of music. Right here in this section, the arrangement itself, the instrumentation is super intense, frantic drums, distortion guitars, 16th, 32nd notes everywhere. But because there is this more melancholic, gothic style chord progression happening in the bigger picture despite it being intense music it still sounds melancholic and sad and you know that is just the magic of harmony really
Funny enough, this particular section right here, it is reminding me of another sort of gothic, dark gothic horror composition from video game music, Bowser's Castle from Super Mario World. This vibe right here, despite being more intense and fast, because of that harmony, because of that chord progression, it is giving me that Bowser's Castle vibe. The C section, where it's... Oh my god. I love that piece, oh my god. We have a nice musical break here, a uh, sort of respite. Still intense, but compared to the previous sections, this is as relaxed as we can be. Wow! Key change. A very tasteful key change. Whoa, okay. That was a very tastefully done fade out. I usually find fade out to be kind of a cop out ending. Oh, you don't know how to properly end your music, so you just do a fade out. <laughs> <laughs> but I think this is one of those instances where it, the intense part fades out and we are only left with the more mellow, with the more melancholic parts of the music. That works for me. Now I understand why a lot of you has been so enthusiastically requesting me to check out the Ultra Kill soundtrack. This is just intense. This is one of a kind and I love it. Thank you so much, Stringies. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. That was some really, really intensive music, but super fun as well. But if you want more of my reaction videos, click here. <laughs>